From the Asgard Company Studios in beautiful Wichita Falls, Texas, from the finest mind in the modern fitness industry, the one true voice in the strength and conditioning profession, the most important podcast on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, starting Strength Radio. Welcome back to Starting Strength Radio. It's Friday, and uh, since it's Friday, uh, it's Starting Strength Radio. I don't know how to make it any more simple or logical than that. Uh, it's Friday, and it's Starting Strength Radio. We are here today with Beth Stelzer, who runs a very important organization called Save Women's Sports. Now, today we are going to talk about a subject that we haven't visited in a couple of years. When we started this podcast back a long time ago, back a couple of years ago, one of our first topics, in fact, maybe the first topic of the first show was the topic of allowing trans women, which is another way to say guys, to compete in women's sports. And, uh, the logical fallacies and the lies that were involved in all of this. And we're going to revisit all of that stuff today. And we're going to tell you exactly what Beth and her organization have been doing to uh, try to return some sanity to this, to this process. Uh, Beth, thank you for your time. I appreciate you tackling this sensitive subject and giving me the opportunity. Well, I don't. I don't think it's that sensitive. I think it's a, a matter of. It shouldn't be <laughs> mathematics. This is this is two plus two equals four stuff, right? And uh, and I don't it know. It is a common uh, sense issue. And and we're gonna we're gonna you know dive into that. But first, I wanted to preface our remarks today by referring to a a piece that I uh, just read this morning. Uh, Steph was discussing this with me yesterday, and uh, I read the thing this morning, and I've got it up on the website right now. Now, for those of you that are are uh, new to the podcast and are perhaps uh, uh, naive to the to the idea that we pre-record this, we are recording this on the twenty fifth of March, and the thing is probably going to run sometime in early April. But I want you to look at today's, uh, today's post and go to this article, and I want you to read it. It's, let me make sure. Yes, this is the 25th. I posted this this morning, and it is an article by a guy by the name of J.M. Smith. And uh, it deals with a, a very important topic here in 2021. It deals with the difference between a little lie, a small lie, and a big lie. And just to, to summarize the topic here for you, to summarize the topic of his little essay, and this is very important. It'll help you order your thinking. I like, I like essays that help you order your thinking. And this provides... Uh, an, an insight into what is going on, all right? Uh, and his premise is there are two basic types of lies. One is a small lie. A small lie is like I'm supposed to be home at 8, right? And I show up at 9. And to cover my ass, I say, yeah, I had, uh, I had a, you know, had a phone call at the office. It took longer than I thought it was going to, and then I, you know, got on the way home, and I realized I'd left my phone on my desk, so I had to turn around and go back and get it. And, right, uh, right. We've all been there. <laughs> and we've all been there. And it's just, you know, it's what you say to cover your ass. And then the next thing you say is, so, <clears throat> so what are we having for dinner? The small lie is told so that you will intentionally forget it. You, you tell the lie to cover your ass for a thing you have done right now, and you don't want it dwelt on. You don't want the lie dwelt on. You want her to say, well, who are you talking to? Well, how long did you talk? Exactly how long did you talk? 
I think where on the desk was your cell phone? You know, you don't want any of that shit discussed. You you just want you you say the thing, and then you go on about your business like you would have had you not had to say it. In contrast, <laughs> the big lie is what all of politics probably since the dawn of time, has been composed of. All of politics has been composed of the big lie. When Barack Obama gets on and says that today the seas stopped rising because he's now the president and global warming is going to be fixed, right? The lie is that the seas are rising faster than they would have anyway as a result of CO2. The lie is the, ri- the seas were rising faster than they would have because of man-made CO2 in the atmosphere. That is a bald-faced lie. It's an enormous lie. CO2 in the atmosphere is not related to the temperature of the earth. We have had numerous ice ages throughout geologic history where the, where the CO2 levels in the atmosphere were four digits, sometimes five digits. CO2 levels do not produce global warming. Sometimes they're associated with global cooling. But it's an association, it's not a cause and effect. Yet the lie is that since CO2 levels have increased a little bit, in the past hundred years, and since they have figured out a way to say that global temperatures have increased a little in the last hundred years, although they haven't, that's the lie, because they want to use the lie to affect policy. And the lie is so enormous that it's believed. And here's the interesting thing between a a small lie and a big lie. If, if I say to you, you realize that uh, 10% of the population of Wichita Falls, Texas, has been killed by the COVID-19 virus, 10%? That's 10,000 oh people are dead because of COVID-19. Now, what are you going to do about COVID-19? 10,000 people have died, right? It's, it's an enormous lie, but a little lie. <laughs> doesn't affect anybody. If I say 10 people are dead or 100 people are dead, nobody gives a shit about that. 100 people were going to die anyway. But if I say a tenth of the population, COVID-19 has decimated the population of Wichita Falls. Decimated, (laughs) using the actual dictionary term. Uh, Then you don't dare disagree because of the enormity of the accusation. And uh, this... This you can examine uh, current affairs with uh, with this in mind, and you'll see that there are currently several big lies in operation. Uh, the most important big lie right now is that COVID nineteen is a pandemic. A pandemic happens every spring because the flu goes around the world every spring, and. COVID-19 is approximately the same thing as the flu in terms of the number of people it kills. There are some differences in the demographics, but the enormity of the death toll has been approximately the same. And yet, here we sit under the, um, under the big lie, and the big lie that COVID-19 kills everybody it comes in contact with is believed by Half of the population, at least, maybe more than half of the population, think that if you get COVID-19, that you have to go to the hospital. And this is on purpose. This is on purpose. It's purposeful misinformation because it, uh, because it obtains a result that these people want to obtain. All right? And this has been in operation. This is the way politics is normally conducted. The people in charge lie to us to get us to react the way they want us to react. And that is exactly what has happened here. And it is exactly what has happened throughout history. 
And we have got to wrap our heads around the fact that we're being lied to, but we're not going to. We're not going to wrap our heads around that fact because because people are stupid, Beth. People are stupid. <laughs> Most people are stupid. The average IQ in the that United when... States. <laughs> Average IQ in the United States is 105. I'm sorry. You ever had tried to have a conversation with somebody with a 100 IQ? It's very difficult to do. You know, these are the people you meet in bars. You know, these are the people you're sitting at the bar with somebody. It makes and you wonder guy, how you the world You start a conversation with a guy, and he says, you know, my wife is, a, uh, you know, a hairdresser, and she tells me that, why, you can give somebody a permanent wave with a bottle of Prill shampoo. And you think to yourself, what am I doing here? Why, why am I listening to this m moron tell me all these ridiculous things? You know, and uh, th that's, that's the typical, you know. That's the typical person. That's the majority of the electorate are these kinds of people. And they'll believe you if you tell if you tell them loudly and often enough. They will believe you when you say that trans women are women. For sure. There's a lot of gaslighting and groupthink going on here. Trans women are women. They are women. So we're manipulating the language with a bald face lie and nobody has got the balls to stand up and say no men are not women and two plus two does not equal whatever you need it to equal today right two two four right it doesn't equal right? five <laughs> no it doesn't equal five it can't equal five but if you say it's five often enough People will go along with you and, and you know, and just say, all right, it's five. Now, that doesn't yeah, work for your accountant. <clears throat> it doesn't work for your CPA. But it does work in the bar, right? It works in general conversation. And if 80% of the people in a population believe that COVID-19 results in death every time it occurs, then you can make policy based on that big lie. And here we are talking about a more, a more, a less consequential thing, admittedly, but a thing that's important to both you and I because we're in this business. I believe uh, it's even more sinister. I mean, this is talking about eroding away all of women's rights out from under our feet. Yes. Well, it's, it, it's more sinister than that because if you can get everybody to agree that that men who say they are women are in fact women, then you can get them to believe that COVID-19 kills everybody it touches. So it's a pattern. It is, it is establishing a pattern and it is taking advantage of a pattern that we have consciously been foisted upon over the past, what, 2000 years of human civilization, I suppose. If we are going to believe every lie we're told without stopping to analyze the nature of the lie, then we can be made to believe that I, Mark Ripito, 65-year-old male, cock and balls, right, can enter the 14-year-old girls' division at a powerlifting meet. And we're not far off. We're, we're not <laughs> can at far least off. enter the women your age. We're not <laughs> far off. No, we're not. That's the whole point of this whole discussion. This is this is very very important, it, you know. And we're going to talk about the specifics of this issue. But the broad general theme here is that the American people, in fact, the, the global population, is at this point apparently willing to believe that up is down, and blue is red. And white is black, and two plus two equals five, and men are are women. Men are in, women in if, they, movement, if they if they identify like the emperor's as well. new clothes. It's like the emperor's yes. new clothes. Same tale. exact it's thing. Like who's going to point it out? It's the same exact thing. So I'm well, here. I'm putting my stake in the ground. Uh, somebody's got to point it out. That's absolutely right. So uh, that having been said, 
Uh, I want to revisit this topic from the perspective that I addressed it a couple of years ago, and I have not. I've watched just damn near everything I can find on this on this subject, and so often the most important aspect of this men and women's sports thing gets gets swept under the rug or not discussed or poorly understood or whatever the situation is. And that fact is that testosterone is responsible for the differences, the physiologic differences between men and women. And the fast way to summarize that is that testosterone improves neuromuscular efficiency. But the most important aspect of this discussion that is very seldom had is that that difference begins about eight weeks after conception yes, in the womb. You. And yes, when you are is... hatched, little boy hatched <laughs> with the cock and balls. From, from he comes out differences. He comes out with profound neuromuscular architectural differences from his twin sister who is not been affected by the testosterone secreted in their little fetal bodies all throughout the, the gestation period. The, the differences begin in utero, and they're much, much more profound than those provided by I like to say, the subsequent levels of testosterone that take place after, during puberty and afterward, right? In other right, words— they're, they're the, evident in utero and cemented during puberty. Yes, yes, they're they're further developed, but the architecture that allows the pubertal expression of these things has already occurred by the time they're born. And yeah, you can't it, remove that Y chromosome. No, you can't, and you cannot improve a woman's standing vertical jump with the administration of testosterone. This is, you know. Women aren't a hormone level. I think testosterone shouldn't even be a part of this conversation. We have women saying no. It, it should not be a part of the conversation because it's much more profound than what happens. At, and if you can convince the International Olympic Committee of something stupid, <laughs> like the, if you if you lower a male's testosterone level for a year then it's okay if they compete in the women's division. If those people are that bought in to this lie, right. I don't know what you do with it. You know, right. what you, at absurd. that point you've destroyed just... women's divisions and all the sports. Yeah, I mean, and then in 2016 Olympics, there wasn't enough time for these athletes to adjust to this new rule. So this time around in Tokyo is the first time we could actually see intact males on the females' platform. And, uh, you know, I don't know. They, did they, they didn't have Tokyo, though. But they that, are going to. When are they going to do that? 21, um, sometime this summer? Yeah, yeah, this summer. Well, that's going to be fun. Uh, I, that that'll yeah, be real so interesting. With... See if that guy down in New Zealand is allowed to compete in the women's division. Yeah, if, if Laurel Hubbard will be able to crush yeah, the competition. Laurel. I guess I've been really concerned with our, our, our local legislation, working with all these states on, on the national level lately. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, having established that 2 plus 2 still does, in fact, equal 4, uh, let's talk about what is going on in terms of the legislation regarding this. Uh, the most important observation is, is the first day Joe Biden got in office, he uh, uh, reversed the, the administration's policy about allowing... Uh, Trans women, I just that term makes me sick. Uh, allowing guys, right, I don't think we should use it. it. They're just males. Let's call a spade a spade. We lost all of our sex separated rights the first day Biden got into office. He threw women under the bus by including gender identity into sex with our laws, so our sex based protections got erased. Now you can self identify. I'm here to protect Title IX. And Title IX was to protect equal opportunities for girls in the education system. But I should see that, you know, it should be common sense all around. We are not the same. Our bodies are created differently, and that should be celebrated. Yes. Uh, you, I sure, have read my article on, uh, on training female athletes and my article on women in ground combat, 
which is derived from the from the principles I developed in the in the training article. And uh, those of you that haven't read that, uh, they're available on startingstrength.com on the website. Just look them up under my name. And uh, the the disturbing most disturbing aspect of and, and we're seeing this every week. This thing is the ball is getting rolling. Standards are going to be changed. Uh, the physical standards for performance are going to We've be changed. We've already seen it, like, for example, in firefighting. Yes. Um, when they let more women in, they lowered the standard instead of just making a different standard for women. Well, I'd rather have a big, burly man capable of hauling me out of a fire than someone who's passed a subpar standard. Yes. Uh, <laughs> what... Uh, is uh, going on with women, Save Women's Sports, your organization. How, when did you so organize it? Where is it organized? Where is it on the web? All of that stuff. When, where, why, how? Okay. So I started Save Women's Sports as a grassroots nonpartisan coalition after I experienced harassment when I spoke out that it was absurd when a male protested the Minnesota Women's State Powerlifting Competition because they were not allowed to compete. So now we're an international coalition of people spreading all across. <laughs> what are you going to say? You got to say something. I see yeah. that look. <laughs> just, just uh, you know, what? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't think really. I don't even think it merits a discussion. If you uh, want to compete in the women's division, that probably indicates that yeah. you aren't good enough to compete in the men's division. We've seen that mediocre males are coming over into the female category and dominating. It's just absurd that I even have to waste my time being here. Right. Yeah. I know. But I started it's... SaveWomenSports.com as a source for truth because so many women, so many people in general get beat up for speaking out against this. Right. Yeah, I don't think we need to belabor the point because everybody watching this podcast already knows the truth of the matter. <laughs> and I'm not going to insult everybody's intelligence by explaining to them that... Uh, you know, Laurel Hubbard down in New Zealand just couldn't uh, uh, couldn't hack it in the men's division, so he figured out a way. Right. I don't and know can, why a guy that... wants to win that bad, though. I don't know. That's understand. the part of it I don't yeah, understand. Yeah, they say they feel like women. Why aren't they more compassionate to women? Well, that's a that's a very good point. Very good point. Uh, yeah, if just facts should not outweigh feelings in this. True. We're, we're a, a little teeny percent of the population. We're listening to their feelings and then throwing women under the bus. Right. And a huge percentage of the population has agreed to the lie. We're seeing in polls 70 to 90 percent. And I think the other percentage is just an issue of awareness. They're just not aware of what is happening. So they want to play nice in, and be nice. What 70 to 90 percent are you seeing in the polls? What in polls that, that people support female-only sports. They do not want yeah. males competing against their daughters right. or in their locker rooms. Anybody with a showers. daughter supports it, right? Pretty much. If you yeah. understand the problem, you're behind us. Sure. Sure. But for some reason, these gutless, pandering politicians <laughs> seem to think that there is a constituency for this for this approach to the it's to the sad thing. To and I just don't some... I don't understand it. I don't understand why anybody in elected office would think that there are enough people to reelect him if he agrees with putting our daughters out of a college scholarship. I don't right. understand why you want a not college. Theirs to give away. Why would you think that you'd want to go to a college that would accept such a an athlete on a scholarship? I, I don't but see there's some things about this when the lie is sufficiently big, you right. have to it's just so say slimy. Okay. Yeah, it's a group huh. think status yeah, right is. now. It is. So, uh, and don't you dare break out of that box because they'll cancel you. Well, they'll try. <laughs> I think no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this. They're going to try. They'll try to cancel me and you, right? This will, this will go up, and they'll try to cancel me and you. And you know what we'll say? Always remember these three words. This is very, very important. This is how you, this is how you deal with being canceled. Go 
get fucked. Fucked. All right. Go get <laughs> fucked. I don't care about we'll your opinion. We'll keep coming back. Yeah. You don't, you're not entitled to an opinion. It's just really about tough though, when you think about how <clears throat> powerful social media is for women. Right. I mean, that's one of our only platforms <clears throat> to communicate nowadays. So when Twitter takes your account away for saying, but a man's not a woman, it's pretty right. hard to be canceled nowadays. Right. So what I have done as a response to that is I have taken myself off of Twitter and Facebook. I, I'm just not going to play. I don't need them. They right, don't make right. me any money. I make them money. They don't make me any money. I'm not going to work for Facebook. Facebook exactly. works for me. And when Facebook stopped working for me, I got off of Facebook. And if everybody would do that. Well, you, you have know, a major point there. You know, if we all stop supporting these corporations that are supporting this movement, we can make a lot of progress. I mean, if we cut off all the sponsors to the Olympics, the Olympics wouldn't have a choice but listen to us. But how are we going to get to that point? You know, are we going to have to have women protesting? What's it going to take here before people really start listening? I'll tell you what it's going to take. And I've, I said this two years ago, and it's doubly true now. Men can't fix this for you girls. That's we can't true. fix this. This is your That's problem. True. This is your problem. And if you're going to get it fixed... But we do need your support in the process. Well, you already so got our support. Yeah, exactly. You've already got but our support. We do support. need to step up. I hear you. I, this is a rallying cry for all the women listening. We need to speak up. Like, I am almost about to tear up. I am so passionate about this because I know the truth and the power truth has. And even one voice, no matter how much it shakes, can make a difference. I'm just an average American mom here, and I'm helping make laws across the nation. What can you do? What are you going to do to protect future generations of females? That's right. And if, if, if the women listening to this can't even come out and publicly agree that they and their daughters are different than their husbands and sons, then they are participating in the lie. It is a lie. Exactly. You know it's a lie. You all know it's a lie, but you've agreed to participate <sighs> and agree with the lie. And if you've got to have the courage to stand up and say, no, no, I'm not, this is bullshit. You know, I'm not going to participate in this. This is a lie. Enough is I enough. I know it's a lie. You know it's a lie. The floodgate. Right. Yeah. They're opening up the right. floodgate and it's going to be too hard to put back. Now is the time. Right. No, this has to be dealt with immediately. It really does, because we are already living in a post truth society. Where truth is no longer what you and I you can understand you can, you is got the enough money. You can pay for science nowadays. Right. Oh, yeah. you know. Oh, you can you've pay for anything been able to, to say whatever you want it to say. You've always been able <laughs> it, to do that. And uh, and it's just, uh, science is not science anymore. Science is professional research. And uh, it's, it's not the same thing as science. And we look at the science that is often pointed to in this issue from the opposition. It's a report by a scientific by a scientist or a doctor that is a transgender person, a male pretending to be a female. And it's a right. self-reported study from a handful of athletes. It's right. not even it's, a it's, scientific study. Yeah, it's that's, not a, that's not a junk. study. It's not science. It's not biology. Um, I mean, you've got thousands, tens of thousands of years of, of human society uh, – Right, have pointing been to these predicated answers. on the idea <laughs> that women do one thing and men do another thing, and the things that they do are uh, based upon their physical capacities. Men can't bear children. Women can't hunt down animals and spear them to death to eat. Right? Now... There may be some exceptions to the latter, but there exactly. are no exceptions but, to the former. But, yes. Right? <laughs> exactly. There are no exceptions to the former. Men don't have babies, and men don't lactate, and men don't raise babies. and they, they There is no such them. thing as chest feeding, et cetera, no, et cetera, but is, we don't need to get under those no, weeds. No, that's so <laughs> stupid. It's just not even worth discussing. But it's just, 
the the idea that every reality is subjective is the only thing that allows the propagation of this lie. You know, there are realities that are not subjective, and this is one of them. And all of the data from sports performance. I mean, we have, for God's sake, we have men's and women's golf. Right? <laughs> I mean, what do you what else do you need to know? Boxes. You know? <laughs> many so, sports have so many different like volleyball has a different net size, hurdles have taller hurdles for the men, basketball hoop size are different. So, I mean, a man transition into a woman's sport, it's not only easier for them because of their physical body, it's actually easier standards. Sure it is. And we all know that. And we all know that, but we've, lots and lots of us have agreed to ignore what we know to be true. And if we to just continue to be nice, over and over, just to mindlessly repeat over and over that uh, <clears throat> men, trans women are women. You, you just can't trans say Trans women are men and most have their penises. Let's be honest. In self-reported studies, they had never have intentions of having surgery. These are intact males invading women's spaces. You know, that are taking some estrogen or whatever the fuck, you know. And uh, this is not, uh, this is not a serious discussion. The, this gets serious when girls and young women are deprived of opportunities based on their athletic performance. That's when this gets serious, okay? Now, if uh, I, if Laurel Hubbard, I mean, you know, this, these are adults down in New Zealand participating in this ridiculous weightlifting federation they've got down there, and I don't care about that. I mean, that women that continue to enter that division uh, – and don't boycott that competition. They're as much of the problem as Laurel Hubbard is. Okay, we're getting because to that point. I agree with you. You you have to say no. I'm not going to to legitimize this farce by participating in it. That's yeah. not the problem. All right, the girls down in New Zealand. If they want to lift against Laurel Hubbard, then they sign up for the meet and they take second and third place. Okay, fine. Let them do it. I'm not concerned about them. I'm concerned about the kids in high school and the kids in college who are having opportunities, who are having opportunities removed as a result of this nonsense. Those yeah, we are have the four people. girls in Connecticut that are suing the Connecticut Athletic Association because they allowed males to compete in female track. And we saw just two males entering into female track and losing over 80 opportunities. Females um, lost to them. 15 state titles those boys now hold. Right. That's what I'm Absolutely talking Absolutely ridiculous. How this many is, records have to be is, lost? This is, it's not merely ridiculous. This is, this is criminal. You, it you is. Have we to are being robbed. Beth, I, I, I think you have to examine the motives, not of the, of the boys that wanted to win so bad they decided to become girls. I don't care about that. I care about the adults supposedly exactly. in charge of this situation that decided to do this to forward some goal. Who are Where these were people? The adults in the room? And what is the... <laughs> What are the what are the motivations of these adults, and who are they? That's what I'm concerned about because you've just ruined opportunities that girls have been raised to think they had. Exactly. You have a lot of money pushing this transgender ideology. It who's, all boils down who's to who's that. Money? <laughs> you have big pharma, big tech. Um, you can go to the 11th hour blog that's with the number 11.com and they will show you the money trail. It's really scary because these transgender people are permanent patients for life and yeah. the insurance companies, everybody's profiting off of it. Well, that's a very good point. 
That's a very good point because that status does not exist outside the. And you're worried about girls' sports. We have a major problem in our nation of rapid onset gender dysphoria in our young women. Women like me, right. who are raised tomboys, are now being told they were born in the wrong body and they're actually boys. Right. It's so scary. We know girls it, it as is. young as 12, 13 years old whose parents are agreeing for them to have double mastectomies. Girls as young as 16 getting hysterectomies. And whose doctors are signing off on it. These... We have hundreds of gender clinics across the nation now. Girls can walk into Planned Parenthoods and get testosterone shots. Well, these people need to be hunted down with dogs and beaten to death. With a kettlebell. Well, you know, th- this is in our society, we're lacking a lot of consequences and people don't have shame. Right. Right. And it and all everyone comes. gets gets on top by abusing everyone else. It's just sad. We have to stand up here. And it, it's all uh, a result of the fact that people have been willing to believe the to lie. lie. Yes, you it's are exactly right. I will never forget lie. that first podcast. You said don't comply with the lie. It's you were just, nailing it on the head right there. It is nothing but a lie. And until everybody confronts the fact that it's nothing but a lie and that lies are not okay, then this, this silly shit is going to continue. So tell us exactly. about what's going on at the state level. So at the state level, we are trying to introduce laws. So it starts with a bill to protect female athletes from K through 12 all the way through the collegiate level, even challenging the NCAA's policies. We have 30 states. We have Mississippi that signed into a law this year. Idaho signed a law last year. We have a couple of bills on the governor's desk and a handful in the second chamber. So I'd like to explain to people that aren't familiar with the process of making a law that a bill starts out with a written text of what they'd like the law to be. That bill then gets a hearing in the chamber, either the Senate or the House. It has a committee hearing there. Then it gets a full vote in the chamber. Then it moves to the opposite chamber for the same process, a hearing and a full vote before it gets to the governor's desk. Once it's on the governor's desk, different states have different time frames for when it needs to be signed. And then it becomes a law. If they ignore it, uh, usually the, it falls back on it becoming an automatic law. Okay, and this is... This has taken place and gone through and been signed by 30 state governors? So, no. We, we have bills going in process in 30 states. Right. And we have one that's become a law this session this year. One became a law just at the end of last year. We have just a handful that are headed to the governor's desk right now. South Dakota had their chance, and Arkansas just went on the governor's desk this week. So, uh... What does it look like? Mississippi is the law. Yep, Mississippi is the only state with the law. Who? uh, What does it look like? The chances for success of these things getting actually signed into law by the governors? Unfortunately, we really see it become a uh, partisan issue. So it really has been dependent on you know if if there's someone that's chairing a committee that doesn't like our bill, they could just choose not to schedule a hearing. Right. And that bill gets swept under the rug. Pocket veto, so, right? It's just, I never realized how slimy politics were. Oh, yeah. But anyway, it's, it's, <laughs> oh, you know, nasty. we're just doing our best. And even if we don't have a chance, say the governor is straight telling us they didn't, they're not going to veto it. Well, as much as we get hearings, as much as we get to talk about it, courage speaks to courage and more women will speak up. More people will speak up and see the issue that's at hand. Yes. How many... Uh, of these 30 states have governors who have publicly stated that they're not going to sign the bill? We have a couple, just a couple so far. Um, but I guess, like I said, I just been keeping my eyes on the prize for the awareness issue. And even if it looks like they're going to veto it, states have um, like smoke out laws where or rules where if the governor vetoes it, if they have so much support in the Senate, they can bring the bill back to life and get a vote on it in the Senate. How many state houses have you been in over the past couple of years? Um, ten, I believe. I'm do, at now. Do you feel like you want to take a shower when you leave? There's not I, enough I, I hot would, showers. <laughs> I would I would want to wash all that off of me when I got out of it. 
that fucked it, up it's, it really drains my my battery it I'm really sure it does, does. I'm sure but it does. seeing it also lights my fire you know someone has to to fight back yeah and i have some really awesome female idols in or role models in other countries that are helping lead the path and we're all standing together i mean it's a hands across the aisle moment from all backgrounds all political beliefs and i'm not saying that all transgender people are a threat but what I'm saying is that most are male bodies, and then we will have male predators taking advantage of these rules. And we are training our young girls to feel comfortable with male bodies who could possibly be predators. And they're not taught women's history in school. That's another thing. They're not taught the truth. Well, so they don't see. That is interesting. Uh, and I, I'm not even as cynical uh, a bastard as, as me is not saying that every transgender person is evil that's not what i these people are are in a terrible situation if they're legitimately in this situation they're in a terrible situation and i don't envy them at all i don't envy them at all they're not the problem as i said a minute ago the people who are the problem are the politicians and to people who in charge who have agreed to pretend that two plus two equals five. These people are the problem. These are always and, the problem. They're the ones telling the big lie and who are and profiting now we have someone off like of the big Rachel lie. Levine ahead of our health department. Like, I mean, we can't play nice anymore. We have no. to call them out for what it is. It is no. a male competing in women's sports. It's this not is a Richard Levine woman. Is, who, is who this is, is Richard Levine. And, and you can find pictures of him dressing up in little doll clothes like a little g- girl, like a total fetish thing. It's disgusting. And they want to push children into transitioning. And even worse so, we have women's sports foundations that are pushing for males to compete in women's sports and telling young boys that it's okay to go through these gender transitions so that you can end up playing in girls' sports. It's just ridiculous. People who haven't had sufficient amounts of biology in school. Um, it's just, uh, but I, you know, I, I don't, I don't even think you had to have biology. If you've ever been around the opposite sex when the you're a kid. Presidential physical fitness test that we all took in, high, in school from the age of six. It shows right. the differences. Right. right. And I'm not, again, I'm not going to insult everybody's intelligence by explaining to you people watching this podcast, uh, <laughs> what the differences are. You already know that you already know that. Anybody that doesn't know that is lying. You're, you're lying about that. This is obvious. This is right. But what it, they might not know is that how the conflation right. of gender identity with sex basically erases the definition of what a female is. Well, that was that's intentional. That's the intentional manipulation of the language. That is what Dr. Orwell referred to as newspeak. <laughs> If you control yeah. the language, it's so crazy. You control the they thoughts. They control you. If you yep. control the language of the people, you control the thinking of the people because you think in the language. And uh, I mean, if you if you haven't watched recently the 1984 version of 1984, that film with Richard Burton and John Hurt, you really need to watch. I that. haven't recently, you, but you really yeah, watch that. it's. It's, I know the similarities are very shocking to what we have nowadays. It's a horror movie. It's not it political and commentary. It is. It's becoming now. a documentary. <laughs> it is. It's a. It's a horror movie. It really is. So, uh, I, you know, I I don't know uh, what else there is to say about this except that you people who are who have been complicit in this lie need to re-examine your relationship with the truth. Are you interested in the truth? Are you interested in two plus two equaling four? Are you, or are you okay with it being five? Could you tell your accountant when he prepares your tax return that you're all right with two plus two being five on your tax return? Can you do that? I'll bet not, but you're willing to play little games like this with very important things. Now, 
in the in the interest of uh, uh, you know being internally consistent here, what would your position be on uh, on an all men's golf club excluding women from membership? I think we should have sex based protections. If men no, no, want I'm to saying have a if, men's if, only if 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 yeah. I've got a golf club and I you know and I say women can't join. It should be it, your right. It should be your right. Good. Good. I'm glad that is that's that's consistent because it's my club and I get to do it. And Exactly. Token, You're a private organization. You should have every right. But yeah. there are other tactical sports that are stepping up too. But for example, you know, CrossFit, they got sued over it and, and they pandered to it. Yes, they did. They certainly did. They certainly did. And we need to stop looking at That's the profits and look at the long-term picture. We're forcing females out of sports Yes. by doing this. Yes. Yes, you are. And uh, you people in charge are forcing females out of sports. Now, if that's your intention, I'm, I'm wondering why. Well, why when we lose our female athletes. That? Because that's the net effect. That's what you're doing. Exactly. We, when we lose female athletes, sports give females a building box for success and for life. Over 90% of our women in government have played sports. I think they've got there because sports have given them the resiliency and yes. leadership roles. Yes. You learn how to work as a team. They're well, cutting off opportunities for women just right. in general. Right. We are going to be. <laughs> Athletic competition is very important for everybody. And I'm almost if, at a loss of words that we even need remove, to be explaining this. If you remove the incentive for, for girls to compete in athletics, which is what you're doing when you're doing this, then that's just one more nail in the coffin of this society. Exactly. We already have reports of moms telling us young girls are not going to games because they don't want to compete against the team with the trans kids on them. Good. Good. And it's I say though. good. I mean, girls should not have to lose their opportunities. They, they but shouldn't yeah, have to. These people are they, putting their foot down. And they should have the opportunity to say, you know what? I'm not going to do that. You know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to agree to your bullshit rules. And I'm not going to justify your existence by participating in this lie. And I'm, I'm happy that they're boycotting that. And that's what needs to be encouraged. Because until this thing collapses from your side of the deal, this is, again, this is something you guys have got to fix. We can't fix it for you. You have to fix this, and you need to encourage all parents of female athletes to tell their it's kids. It's time for soccer moms to wake up. Right. Look at what's exactly. going on here. Just because Jimmy wants to play in the girls' team doesn't mean we can make a rule out of nice list that is going to affect future generations of females forever. Amen. <laughs> right. Precisely. Precisely. So uh, Beth and I are encouraging you, if you're watching this podcast, to – Get up off of the couch and participate in this. Uh, her organization is SaveWomensSports.com. So spell it correctly, Save, S-A-E-V, S-A-V-E, Women's, W-O-M-E-N-S-S-P-O-R-T-S. S. Dot yeah. com. Did I spell that correctly? You did. You I, did. I got yeah. there finally. I got there finally. And go to her website, uh, contribute. You know, this, you all this shit costs money. Updates. You need yeah. to contribute. You need to follow her website. If this is taking place in your state and this is an issue that is important to you, I would recommend that you get involved. Now, I don't normally encourage people to involve themselves in politics because under normal circumstances, that would be the equivalent of rubbing vomit on your face. And that's just not <laughs> something I would, I would want right, but you this, to do. This is not a political issue. This is but, not a religious issue. We're from all sides. This Join is our team. something that has got to be addressed. And if we can address this lie and nip it in the bud, then possibly 
people can learn to start thinking about all these big lies and address them with analysis and logic instead of with intimidation and fear because that's what's going on. They have successfully intimidated a huge number of people. And you can't allow yourself to be intimidated. Majority. No, no, silence majority no longer. Nope, can't have it. Can't have it. Absolutely. If you have any questions. I really appreciate this opportunity. Well, if, if, if those of you watching have any questions for Beth, email her at... Uh, what, info at savewomensports.com. Info at savewomensports.com. All right, and she'll get the email. And uh, she's real good about returning emails, and I hope this generates um, some interest that previously wasn't there. We've got quite a few people that watch this podcast, and I think that uh, those of you in our audience today with uh, female children that want to participate in athletics, this is your problem. This is a problem. And you have to address it. I can't address it. The only way I address it is I've, as I've done today. But this is your problem, and you're going to have to do something about it. If you care about your kids, if you care about your girls, if you care about your boys yeah. that want to do this insanity, that's also a parenting problem. It's not your job to tell them, yeah, it's okay, honey. You can be Jane instead of Jim, and then you can go play on the women's team. And do better than you would against all those mean guys that are going to push you around. That's, that's not the way to address this problem. And if you're addressing it like that, you know, maybe you shouldn't have had kids. You know, I, that's not harsh. I think that's exactly the truth. I could really elaborate truth. on that, but I think you I said think it that's succinctly. exactly the truth. And because uh, you're telling them things that are not right, you're making them content to be. People who take the easy way out. That's what you're doing when you encourage your boys to participate in the girls' division. You're, I'm ashamed of you. I know you don't care about that, but some people may, right? Beth, thanks. I appreciate you. And uh, Likewise. I hope things are – I hope things we can get turned around here pretty soon because uh, – if we don't, we're all in all in a hell of a bunch of trouble. Well, thanks to independent media like you're doing right now, I mean, the tide is turning. Yes, hopefully. Thanks for being with us. It's been great. Thank you. Great. And thank you for being with us on Starting Strength Radio. We'll see you next Friday.